This video is an introduction to working with raster data in R. There are two common kinds of spatial data, raster data and vector data. And we're going to start with raster. Raster data is designed to store geospatial information that is continuous across space. And so it's the most common kind of data for things like climate variables, satellite imagery, and elevation. And it's stored in a gridded format that looks like this. And so <clears throat> we're familiar with uh, imagery. And so this is an image, uh, which is a form of raster data. And if we zoom in on that imagery, we can see that it's composed of pixels. And so this is really a grid of pixels. And within each pixel, uh, there's a value. So each pixel contains a value, a numeric value. And so fundamentally, if we look at this data under the surface, uh, it is a matrix of numbers. And then uh, when we look at it visually, those numbers are translated into colors through a key of some kind. And that's what produces uh, these pixel values that we're used to seeing that then result in these larger visual images. And so if we were talking about elevation for here, for example, these, would, these numbers would be, say, meters above sea level. For working with raster data, uh, we're going to uh, work with a package called STARS. That is one of the modern packages for dealing with uh, this kind of data. And we'll start by <clears throat> importing some elevation data collected from an airplane using an instrument called LIDAR. And this is data collected at the National Ecological Observatory Network. And the way that LIDAR works is it shoots a laser down from the plane, and then it can detect uh, every time that laser hits something, it bounces back to the plane, and it can figure out how high that thing that it bounced off of was. And one of the values that comes out of LIDAR is that last interceptor, basically the intercept where it hits the ground. And that can be used to create something called a digital terrain model or a DTM. And that DTM looks like this. Uh, we can see that we've got uh, trees and those dots in the tree canopy are LIDAR intercepts, uh, but there are also then dots uh, running along the ground surface here where the brown line is, and that brown line is then the digital terrain model, uh, which is also the elevation. All right, so let's go ahead and actually load some of this data uh, to look at. Like I mentioned, we're going to be using the STARS library. So uh, let's go ahead and run uh, library STARS. And that's going to load up uh, a bunch of other packages that it needs to work. And then in order to load raster data, we use the read STARS function. And so we're going to start by looking at the digital terrain model at a NEON site called Harvard Forest. And so we'll call this raster data DTM for digital terrain model underscore harv to indicate that we're working with Harvard Forest data. And then we're going to assign that the output from read stars which is the function that we use to load. And then we need to figure out where this data is. So I'm going to actually move myself over here. Uh, 
And uh, if we go into this data folder, we'll see that we have two subfolders, one labeled Harv, that's where our Harvard data is, and one labeled SJER, which is another site that we'll be using in the exercises. Uh, and then in Harv, we have a bunch of files, and one of those is Harv DTM crop, and that's the file that we want. So remembering what we learned last week about paths, we now want to go into the data directory, and this is a relative path, so uh, no forward slash to start, so I'm going to type data, forward slash, the subdirectory is harv, forward slash, and then the name of the file, uh, which I've sort of forgotten, so I'm going to start typing it, uh, and then select harv dtm crop. And so if we run this, uh, we can then look at this object by typing its name and hitting enter. And we'll see that it's a stars object with two dimensions, so that's x and y. Uh, these objects can actually have more dimensions than that, but we're just sticking with a, a single raster right now, so it's two dimensions. Uh, and then one attribute, which means that we've got one layer of information which is just the elevation. And we also have other information about the values. So we're kind of in the range of, of 350 meters here in terms of elevations. Uh, and we have some information about uh, where this data is located. Now that we've loaded this data, uh, let's go ahead and look at it visually. Uh, we can do that using either base plotting functions in R or ggplot. And since we've been working with ggplot so far, that's what we're going to stick with. So I'm going to go ahead and load the ggplot package by adding library ggplot2 to the top here. And uh, remember, I always want to add my packages, my package loads at the top of the file. I don't want them to come down lower. So we're going to go back up to the top and add this. And there is a special geome in ggplot for plotting stars data. And so we're going to go ahead uh, and type ggplot. And we're just going to leave all of the defaults empty for now. That's actually common with geospatial data because we're often going to want to plot uh, multiple layers from multiple different sources. And then we'll hit enter. And now the geome is geome underscore stars. We then want data to equal the raster that we just loaded. So that's DTM harv. And because this is raster data, the geome already knows what to do with it in terms of an aesthetic by default. And so in contrast to other ggplot graphs that we've made so far, uh, we can actually not add a mapping here uh, if we don't want to. And so if we go ahead and run this, It'll take just a second because we're plotting a large number of pixels. Uh, and when it's done, uh, we should get out an image that represents the elevational variation uh, within this uh, particular region. And that's uh, what we see here. We have some higher elevation areas, some lower elevation areas, uh, and generally just some variation across space. We can also change this color ramp if we want to. Uh, it's a little hard to see the variation here right now. Uh, <clears throat> and we do this using scale functions. And when we learned how to use ggplot for tabular data, we use scale functions for stretching the axes, and in particular for scaling them logarithmically, uh, and changing the scale function for uh, the color ramp is doing the same thing. It's just in this 
color dimension uh, that we're viewing, and it's going to change how uh, the colors shift in response uh, to the change in the underlying value. One very nice color ramp out there for a lot of things is called Veritas. It's been well designed with color theory in mind to help the brain understand properly what's happening uh, in the data that we're looking at. And it's also uh, an accessible color ramp, meaning that folks with different kinds of color blindness can see everything uh, successfully. To uh, change the color ramp, we add a plus. And then again, this is going to be a scale function. In this case, we're going to scale the fill. And the idea there is that this is the inside of these cells, these inside of these pixels. And so it's like the inside of a bar plot or a histogram. So we call that fill. And then the name of the color ramp, so Veritas. And then there are a few options here, and we're going to use underscore C. And that underscore C stands for continuous, and so it's appropriate for things like elevation, where there's continuous variation. Uh, if we had discrete or categorical data, uh, then we would use D instead. And then our parentheses. And now if we run this, once R finishes plotting it, we'll get the same graph, but now with a different color ramp uh, and one that's going to help us see the topographic variation at the site a little bit better. And now it becomes clear that our lowest elevations are over here and almost have uh, this sort of valley-like uh, structure to them that we can now see. So that's a quick intro to working with raster data in R. We're using the STARS package, and we can load in raster data using STARS, using the read underscore STARS function. We can plot it in ggplot using geom underscore STARS. And we can change the color ramp for how the raster data is shown uh, using scale fill, Veritas is what we're using, but there are a variety of other options, uh, and then underscore C for continuous. Check, checkity check, are we recording without a terrible lag?